Hey, it's Joel. Nope, not at home. I'm in sunny Southern California. I'm here at Vision Miner. This is Rob next to me, and these are some amazing industrial additive manufacturing machines right behind me. We're gonna get into how they are awesome and how they are enabling the future of spaceflight right here on 3D Printing Nerd. Nailed it. Hey, Rob. Hey, Joel. Good to see you, man. Absolutely, man. It's crazy. You know, I've told my audience before, <laughs> you and I attended the same high school, which we is just did. amazing. And yeah. so we're, 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 we're brothers in that. But we're brothers in additive manufacturing. Yep. And Vision Miner happens to do a lot of it. Can you talk a yes. little bit about Vision Miner yes, and what the do. goal here is? So, I mean, honestly, when I started learning, I was watching your videos, you know, uh, oh. back in the day. But we, when we got in, we were prototyping parts for gimbals and in the drone industry and all kinds of stuff where it needed to be strong, rigid. It needed to be really, like, it just needed to work. Um, okay. And so when we found high temperature thermoplastics in the 3D, 3D printing space, we were like, oh, strong as steel? What, 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 what is this? Okay, <laughs> it's plastic. You can replace it, metal with it. Okay let's get into this and then when we got into it nobody was doing it there was like one NASA white paper about them converting an ultimaker into a high temp machine and that was about it so we had a uh, yeah um, we got the first in Tamsis fun mat machine prototype and then we got a second one and we just started getting into it we just started printing we're like we're gonna figure this stuff out and let's make a business around it because nobody's doing it everybody needs to learn uh, and this stuff is freaking cool you know it's used in space it's used in medical devices it's using all across these industries where, I mean, it's like, I mean, you, most people have never even seen the parts that are actually made out of these materials. So sure. It's really interesting stuff. But, well, and you know, just talking about that, a lot of people haven't actually seen the materials themselves. And so, True. okay, just yep. consumer level, we've got PLA, ABS, PTG, ASA, right. variants of nylons, um, you know, stuff like that. Carbonate oh yeah, so in, PC, yeah. PC, we're starting to get into more of yeah. the, the engineering grade, but when we talk about, uh, industrial additive manufacturing right. or industrial grade polymers, what are we talking about? So we're talking everything from PEI, the, the stuff that we use as beds for PLA <laughs> and everything else, we print that out of the nozzle. Uh, we use PEAK, uh, PPSU, polyphenol sulfone, uh, PPS, um, uh, PSU, and uh, basically a bunch of different super high temperature filaments that are printing at about 400 Celsius or somewhere, you know, give or take 40 400. Celsius. 400, okay. 400, yeah. yeah. That, so not only are they, uh, the, the material properties themselves are fit for these industrial and professional applications, right. but the temperatures that you have to melt them yeah. at are also right. industrial or right. professional. And, and then there's, there's variants uh, with like uh, different fiber filled, like uh, carbon right. fibers and glass right. fibers, right? Glass fibers, carbon fibers, and that um, really reduces the warping and it increases the stiffness and the strength to waste ratio on all these polymers. Um, as long as you're using chopped carbon, then it, it just like really makes it easier to print. It makes it a generally a stronger part, depending on the application, um, yeah. Well then, okay, so chopped carbon fiber usually makes the material a, a black and a matte finish. Is right. that what's going on in the machine behind you? Uh, that is what's going on right now. Uh, this is the Cincinnati Sam HT. It's a newer high temp printer uh, with Look crazy that. specs. We can actually crank the bed to 250, so you can, you can practically melt stuff on the bed. I can make bed. breakfast on the bed. Yeah, yeah, literally. <laughs> Uh, so right now we got a part for a defense contractor. Um, I don't actually know what it's for. Um, well, it's a defense contractor. I don't think anyone really knows right, what it's right. for. Uh, a lot of the stuff we get is like heavily shrouded under NDAs, and it's like it's like this is a part going in something, and all we know is it needs to survive at you know 200 Celsius and sulfuric acid at 300 psi underground. And sure. We're like, Sounds good, man. All right, we'll we'll figure out how to print it and actually make it work. How hot's the chamber? Like, uh, I, I, it's warm. Right, right. So this one, I believe, right now is about 110 to 120. Uh, we've Jeez. been experimenting at cranking up past 140 up to 160 and above, but we're experimenting with that. I mean, it's an oven at this point. It's literally an oven. Yeah. And if I look on the inside, it looks crazy NASA space-like. I mean, yes. there's 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 <laughs> pipes and there's tubes and. Yep. What's going on inside here? Is that water cooling? That's water cooling on all the stepper motors, uh, the extruder itself, because you're in a chamber that's so hot, you can't just cool it there, right? That's I mean, right. Yeah. I, I, I get, yeah. You know, people preach that if you put an enclosure around your machine, right. we're not talking about, uh, uh, we're, 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 or we're talking about the parts themselves, the electronics being degraded because of the heat. Right. And so this is the extreme version of that. So right. there's active cooling on the electronic exactly. components. Exactly. Brilliant. Anything over uh, 80 Celsius or so, like the further up you get from that, you start to see skipping, you start to see errors, you start to see electronic errors and whatnot. So it's very important. <laughs> Keep well, everything cool. Obviously, it's working because, I mean, look at that part. It is 
gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Do you know what material this is? Uh, this is carbon fiber Ultim. So this is uh, from 3DX Tech, and they're printing at about 380 Celsius on the nozzle right now, and I believe about uh, probably one, uh, I think we're only at 145 on the bed right now. Uh, we got our nanopolymer down there on glass so that it uh, just sticks, you know, and then the vacuum table and all that. And, <laughs> yeah. This is nuts. So engineering materials like this, though, um, I mean, we talk about PETG, we talk about um, glow-in-the-dark filaments or TPUs, TPEs, yep. very hygroscopic. Are engineering materials hygroscopic as well? On a whole nother level. Um, so Ultim 1010 absorbs moisture uh, up to 0.02% right, of its mass will, will absorb moisture. And uh, that happens in about 10 minutes in open air, depending on how humid it is out. Right, so you're like, <laughs> you oh, serious? you open up your new filament, and then first off, it's probably not dry out of the bag. You're gonna have to dry it, but if you take it, and say you take it out of your dryer, set it on the table, prep your machine, cool, then put it in the machine, it's already absorbing you know, all that moisture and you're gonna start to get to the you know, snap, crackle, pop, and fizz out of the nozzle, your part's gonna look like junk, it doesn't <laughs> stick to the bed, it doesn't stick to itself, it's really, it's really crazy what that really does. Yeah. So then what's the solution to that? How do you actively dry an engineering grade material. So you have to prepare the polymers for processing. That's like the technical way of saying it, right? <laughs> yes, Which it means is. It's, you, know, you have to dry it before you melt it, right? So if there's any moisture in there and you're melting it at high temperature, that moisture is gonna turn into steam. So you need to prepare it, you need to dry it out uh, like completely before you go and melt it through a nozzle. So how do you do that? Well, let's go check it out. I'll show you what we do. Great. Now, Rob, I've done an episode on a food dehydrator, which right. this is it. It looks familiar. Yes, I understand this. This looks dangerous. What yeah. is it? So this is a lab oven, right? So this um, allows us to program in different temperatures over different amounts of time, and you can use that for annealing parts. Okay, it's, it's, I understand that part. Right? Uh, but it also just maintains high temperatures uh, you know, efficiently, um, so we use it to dry our filaments at a, about 150 Celsius, generally. Celsius, Celsius. okay, because this, yeah. The food dehydrator, we're talking 120 to 140 Fahrenheit? Uh, yeah, so 70 Celsius usually yeah, is the yeah, max yeah. on those things. Okay, yeah. so this is a lot more. Yeah, yeah, you know, so uh, in doing that, you know, you have to bake Ultim at like 150 or, and peak and, and all the high temperature stuff, uh, otherwise it just does not dry Well, their, their glass transition temperature is so high, I guess it right. makes sense to bake right. it at that. That presents a problem though, right? Yes, because, it does. Okay, let's be honest. <laughs> um, if I put my spools of PLA in here, sure the PLA would begin to get soggy, yeah. but the spools themselves would suffer failure, and, right? And those are either made of ABS, PCABS, or polycarbonate, and right. which still melts at about 120 Celsius. Okay, so how do yeah. you solve that problem? Uh, well, we started uh, melting spools, and you know, <laughs> we've got plenty <laughs> Look of these. Look at that. Uh, it's very, uh, yeah. <laughs> You've made art. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're gonna hang a bunch of these up from, from the uh, ceiling as a chandelier, right? Sure, or you um, know, at a clock face. <laughs> uh, but what we ended up doing was we needed metal spools. We had to dry everything at higher temperatures and what's not gonna melt? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You said metal. Right. May I? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> this is metal. This is a metal spool. Mm -hmm. No way! Aluminum 6061, powder coated with the hard anod or not powder coated, hard anodized. Uh, okay. Powder coating will chip off at especially at these temperatures. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, <laughs> this is crazy. I mean, it feels cool. It feels really cool. This would survive in the oven then. Oh yeah, oh, oh yeah. Uh, we, can, cool. we can crank it to, you know, 180, 190 if we need to dry it really fast or, um, you know, if we drop it on the ground, you know, whatever, it's fine. Uh, and we made it really, really functional. One of the big things uh, is we use a lot of the carbon fiber and glass composites. And those love to be brittle and snap, especially when they're super dry. Even I know so, that. Right, so you get all, you know, most of the spools that come on, there's like two holes here and two holes here. And you're like, I either don't have enough filament or this or the angle's wrong. Oh, so we put holes around the whole those thing, holes no matter this. where you're at. You're good to go. This is super yeah. functional. And it does have the yeah. vision minor. It does, so of that's, course. That's yeah. pretty cool. This is cool. And I'm glad you told me about this. So then your, your customers can get their filament on. Exactly. Metal you know, spools. if we're melting this stuff and to properly print it, you know, if we're melting spools running into all these problems, like most of the, the products we've made just come from solving problems that our customers are also seeing. So, uh, you know, from the glue, it's, they can't stick anything. Okay, now it sticks. Great. You know, the, the spools are melting. Well, let's make a spool and, and give that out too. And it's like, 
we're just going along, going along, and, and as we fail, we learn, and then we make, and we fix, and we make it work. So know? wait a minute, though, then, these are, this is a pressure pot? This is a yeah. vacuum chamber. Yeah, this is the next step, so like. Did this know, come from solving a problem? This did, this did. Um, so <laughs> one of the things about water is under vacuum or under pressure, it boils at a lower temperature, right? It'll boil at room temperature. Oh, it's just like, um, uh, going higher in altitude means your water boils at a lower temperature. Exactly. So then if you remove all the pressure. Right, then it just instantly boils. Oh. And so if we stick the hot roll of filament, it's 150 C, you know, it's already past that. We stick it in there, lower the pressure, it gets rid of all trace moisture, uh, and then we're good to go. <laughs> okay, we're talking about trace moisture. So trace. this this is gonna solve the problem most of the way. This is just that little extra step right. to make sure your end result is just It's literally perfect. that 0.001% that's maybe in there. It's it's tiny amounts. And if you take the filament out, you've got about 10 minutes before it. <laughs> it's <laughs> so just it's, nuts, yeah. that's nuts. Yeah. 10 yeah. minutes, <laughs> yeah, 10 literally. minutes. <sighs> this is cool. Dude, it, yeah, it, it's it's a ton of fun, you know, uh, but we, we definitely didn't get here without a load of failures, just a load of, this doesn't work, why not? We don't know, okay, we'll figure it out, we'll do this, you know, and then it fail, 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 win, finally, oh my God, what did we do? <laughs> I don't know, let's figure that out, you know. Uh, so it's just been a, a string of the last two and a half, three years of figuring it out, doing the R&D projects for the different companies, you know, uh, all kinds of stuff. And there's actually some really cool stuff we can show you in regards to that, uh, if you want to check it out. Let's go. Sweet. All right, before we get into all the, the really cool stuff, I want you to meet Patrick. What's hey, up, Patrick. Bill? Nice to have you, Good man. to meet you. Super stoked, bro. What do you do here at Vision Miner? Ah, a little bit of everything. Wear many hats, keep the business going, come up with innovation. That's what I got to figure out and do. What were well, your beginnings? I started uh, with Vision Miner, came out of a necessity because I had my drone business that had been going for about eight, 10 years. And we were manufacturing drones. I had all the Haas machines, the routers and stuff. And what I would find is, I mean, you're running this half million dollar machine. You're taking a block of aluminum, you're wheeling it down and you're making like this beautiful part and it's done and you get it. And you're like a millimeter off. And it is the most saddening, frustrating thing because you're burning $75 an hour in engineers, you're burning machine time, you're burning the cost of the metal and stuff. And I was so frustrated, I said, what can we do to stop making these mistakes? And I learned about rapid prototyping and this whole 3D printing stuff. And that's what got me looking into 3D printers. Okay, great, I'm gonna go buy a 3D printer. First thing I start doing is printing in PLA. Nice, man, beautiful, super smooth. This looks like an injection molded part, right? And the moment I mounted my camera on it, it broke. It was too much weight. And I'm like, okay, this isn't real world rapid prototype testing. This is what's better. Okay, ABS. Okay, let's get an ABS machine. So now I'm spending more money in the, it's not working. You know, I'm spending more time trying to get this stuff to stick to the bed, failing prints, clogged nozzles. And so I'm going backwards. When I used to be able to finish a part, it might take me a couple days and at least it was finished. But now in this 3D printing, it's taken me weeks just to solve the problems to get the machine to work. And so I said, that's it we have to get into this and figure it out ourselves. And so I dove in and started to research these high temp 3D printing, uh, the printers and stuff like that, what can do functional parts. I wanna make a part and be able to put it into use. Not just a trinket, not just a toy. I need to use this, you know, something that's strong. And that's when I started learning about Peak and Ultim. And that's when I learned about this high temp stuff. I see. Man, that created all sorts of new problems like breaking printing bed glass you know now you're at temperatures of 400 c yeah. and what got us to where we are today joel i can promise you and i can tell the audience that it's from failing and failing fast so anyone who's trying to start their business you want to fail as quickly as you can so that you can come up with the solutions to solve those problems when no, i'm learning to, from it right learning from you, it as fast as you learn. can that's yep. it, and you learn from every failure. You know the famous Thomas Edison, you know, I didn't fail 100,000 times, I found 100,000 ways not to make a light bulb. Sure, you know? yeah. Yeah. So I know that. So that's what we did, so we fail. And when I talk about failing, guys, I mean, we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> you guys 
did not uh. see Vision Minor or me or Rob for over a year <laughs> because we were just steady working in the <laughs> office, printing, printing, failing, failing, pulling our hair out. That's why my gray's beard, man. It wasn't like this three years ago. So that's it, Joel. That's what got us into the business out of a need and necessity. And then through just trial and error and forcing ourselves to fail, we were able to refine and tune this process to where now we have mastered it to where I feel like we're probably one of the only ones in the world have the knowledge base of I mean, what we got in this industry. We're winning contracts because of it. You know? That's it. And it came yeah. from this right here, guys. So when you're <laughs> failing, don't get down on yourself. Like, Just figure out what you've got to do to make it work. And keep going. <laughs> keep charging ahead. That's you're it. quite motivational, Patrick. Oh, wow. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I recognize a lot of these parts down here. And I find yeah. it interesting that even... I mean, obviously, I printed a lot of consumer materials, and you know, I get my failures, and I learn from it. And now, at this point, with the knowledge that I've gained, yeah. I'm, also, I'm I'm pretty good at it, I would say. But you're on a completely different level. I mean, we're talking higher cost industrial machines, higher cost yeah. materials. I mean, Rob just showed me how to dry this stuff. Yeah. Metal spools, it's yeah. insane. And so to see this level. I mean, you've kept all your failures, yeah. it looks like. No, that's probably well, like started, a month's worth. <laughs> we, started, we started gathering, and we were like, we should make a big acrylic tower full now, of all this you'll stuff. You'll notice, too, Joel, that a lot of this stuff is just simple. It's 90% of the problem at the beginning was bed adhesion. Like, when you do a peak print, like, you try to print something like this. I mean, <laughs> you try to print something like this. You will have anywhere from like 20,000 to 40,000 pounds of pressure trying to peel this part up from your glass bed. And we're, I, talk, we're talking the, the part curling yeah, up from the bed, right? Part curling up, 20, shrinking, 20,000 pounds. 20 to 40,000 pounds. If you do a solid, flat, solid, big is the worst thing to do. <laughs> I mean, as you see, that's what it looks like. So again, I would come in and I would see Rob you used to you used to prep the build plate with this oh glue God. and then you got to scrape it and then you bake it for 15 minutes and you take it out and you do it you got to do that three times so you're talking about a 30 <laughs> 45 minute print process and you start your first print you don't even get the first layer down and it start in the ear yeah. now you got to do another 30 45 minutes yep. so I, I would come in and he would be <laughs> covered in dust from scraping glue yeah, yeah, yeah. and i said that's it I'm going to solve this bed adhesion problem. I'm going to hire the baddest scientists in the world that we can possibly find, and we're going to make a product because this is what was happening nonstop. Oh, yeah. There's breaking glass. Wait, what is that? Is that a broken build plate? So, yes. look, this is a part that we did, and it literally it just pulls chunks of glass. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Wait, literally. that's that's just that's missing glass. It's, oh, yeah. How do you do that? Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, yeah. Pete does. That sure yeah. is. It. It oh my gosh! Sticks them apart after, and, and you have to smash it up with a hammer if you're going to use the part. Yeah. So after about eight months of development, we were taking all sorts of working with this world-renowned scientist. We were able to take these chemical compositions, and we came up with the solution. This nanopolymer adhesive. We only made this for Peak and Ultimate. <laughs> yeah. Like that was it. I needed this stuff to work, and by accident. It works on everything. I don't know. You said leading scientists. I bet they had it in the back of their maybe, head. Like, ah, we're going to do Patrick a solid right yeah, here. That was a true solid because after that, we're like, oh, damn, it works on everything. You know? So that's when we decided to share it with the rest of the world. So if you like this, hit up the website, Vision Meyer. We'll send you guys a free sample for Joel. Joe, if you can maybe give your followers a coupon code or something like that, we'd be happy to reward that and we'll send a free sample to anyone who totally. requests it and we'll even pay for the shipping. That's a great deal. And the coupon code for uh, free shipping. Cool. Yeah. There we go. Sample's already free. So, <laughs> if you guys like it, if you have anything out there, even if you're using PLA, ABS, it doesn't matter. High temp stuff obviously works. Take the free sample. I know there's hairspray and maple syrup and all that other good stuff maple that you can syrup. use. Maple syrup. It works. Oh, yeah. yeah this guy come of. in and he's basically <laughs> making pancakes on the damn high temp machine. <laughs> so, anything that will get it. That's it. Hit us up. You can have a sample. Awesome. All right, Joel. Now there's something really cool we want to show cool. you. We're really proud of this project. Uh, you want to go check it out? I'd love to. Hey, Patrick. Yeah. Joe, Good to meet you. Pleasure, Appreciate buddy. it, man. I want you to come around anytime you want. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> That's fantastic. All right. Okay. So, what are we doing in here? Uh, so uh, this will really tell you everything you need to know if you want to just read that title. This thick quick. paper. Okay. Yes. 
monolithic trace contaminant sorbents fabricated from 3D printed polymer precursors. What? I recognize 42% of the words in this <laughs> statement, but come on, Rob. Right. What's going on here? Right. So uh, what this is, check this out. These are some parts that we helped develop. Uh, they're literally filters for the environmental system on the spacewalk suit. The, so the suit that astronauts wear yes. on the space station or, or whatever, space vehicle. Yes. So when they're, they're out in space, yeah. the space, like space. Like the, yes. Space. This part will be in it. Yeah. Oh. Yep. That's cool! It's uh, crazy. When we find out, they, they wouldn't tell us what it was for, for the first, you know, first 90% of the project. And when they finally did, it was like, whoa, 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 what have we been doing? This is freaking awesome. Well, then describe this, because this, this is tiny. Right. But the extrusions are tiny. So exactly. what material is this? Uh, so this is actually carbon fiber peak. Uh, and that was the main challenge. They went to five other companies who were doing the high temp stuff at the time, this was about a year and a half ago, and everybody tried to do it and they ended up picking us and they said we were the only ones that could actually do it. So we were using a 0.2 millimeter nozzle with carbon fiber filled I was just gonna polyethylether say, ketone. How, yeah. how, do you, how do you fit the chopped fiber through oh, a 0.2? Let's see, you can, only, you can only do so many grams before the nozzle shot. Okay. Um, yeah. It, you know, just getting it to print that cleanly, um, you know, coming up with like this log pattern or log, a log house. Uh, yeah, a log house. Log cabin. Log cabin, where yeah. it's like, oh, it's like this right. way and then this way, right? Right. Uh, so, you know, we came up with this process in Simplify 3D to make it lay down each extrusion separately to eventually create the full part. And then they take this and they put this into a whole other process that, that changes it a little bit. And then um, they needed this. Right. They have the process to go from this to whatever. Exactly. But then, but this, but in order to transform this, they need this. And exactly. so you made. Yeah, this hundreds of them. <laughs> this is going into dude, space. It's crazy, man. It's going into I'm space, like, like, dude. Um, this is amazing. Dude, it's like every every day, every project, every customer is like so vastly different. You know, they're in space. We're doing rocket nozzles, and it's just it's just crazy. Like where these materials are used. It's stuff that we don't hear about every day, but it's the stuff that you see in science fiction films. And like like oh, that's a real project. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is why I love learning about this, because the industrial side of additive manufacturing with these crazy polymers right. is exciting. Yeah. And it's inspiring, and it's in use today to make science oh, yeah. fiction science fact Yeah, every day. I mean, more it, people need to know yeah. about this. Dude, these polymers have been around for 30, 40 years, uh, but they've only been in the 3D printing space for the last few years. Um, so it's it's... Widely used, and as people discover that, oh my god, you can 3D print Peak or Ultim or PPSU, uh, the possibilities are almost almost literally endless. Yeah. yeah. You have a cool job, Rob. I do. <laughs> it's freaking sweet. Rob, I really want to thank you for letting us come by. Dude. This was a lot of fun. Thank you, man. Uh, the industrial side of additive manufacturing is so is so crazy, and it's, it's good to know that this part of it's in some good hands, dude. Ah, cheers, man. <laughs> we do what we can. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more because I love you all. As always, high five. Nailed it.